subject of this Irish folklore video was chosen by my patrons on Patreon. You can help vote to decide what kind of content I make by signing up for as little as one dollar a month. When the Milesians took Ireland from the Tua de Danon and forced the Tua de to live in the other world, one of their number died before he could make it to the shore of Ireland and was left on an island by the shore of County Kerry. This person's name was Daum and that island became known as Chuck Din, the house of Thou. And when he was laid to rest there with his final breaths, he said that all of his descendants would come to gather at his house after their death. A Down is a very unusual Lord of the Dead, as you'll see in this story. Which begins, as many Irish stories do, with a piper. This piper's name was Tom McKinney. And he and his family were very down on their luck. All of their cows had taken ill and died. And they had sold off most of their prized possessions, trying desperately to make ends meet. All that Tom had left that he could call his own was his fine set of illin pipes. Now he only had a few tunes in his head, but nevertheless, he decided to walk into town and to try his luck playing music at the local pub to see if anyone would give him some money for it. But as he was walking down the road, who should come out from behind a bush but thou, the Lord of the Dead. And seeing him, Down said, I sure it's yourself, Tom. Why don't you play me some music on those pipes? And this was a very, very cold winter's morning. And Tom said, I would love to, my Lord, but my fingers are frozen to the bone. I couldn't finger the pipes at all. So Down, he takes Tom's hands and holds them between his own, as if to give them warmth. And he says, there now, Tom, you will be able to play the most wondrous, beautiful music that anyone has ever heard. You will have this gift for the rest of your life. Now, I know you and your family are suffering hard times right now. So take this bag of gold, take it home to your lovely family. And later this evening, when the sun is going down, meet me here at this spot. You can do me a favour. So Tom, he takes this sack of gold home and his wife is amazed. She's delighted with it. And they were able to have a nice big dinner for the first time in ages. But as the sun went down, Tom remembered his deal with Down. He went back down the road, back to that bush and sure enough, there he met Down on the back of a huge white charger of a horse. But Down wasn't alone. He had a force of 80 riders with him, all on great white chargers. And Down said to Tom, We are going off riding tonight, Tom, to County Clare, to a castle in that county, where a young woman lives who we are going to kidnap. At the gate of this castle can only be opened by the hands of a mortal man, which is why we need your help, Tom. Not one of us could open that gate. And so Down led Tom to an old plough horse, not a great war charger like the others were riding. And he gave Tom some very important instruction. Now, Tom, while we are riding to this castle, you must keep your mouth shut. You must not speak a single word or the enchantment upon these horses will break. And so Tom mounted his horse and they all began to ride. And the enchantment on the horses let them tear through the forests, jump great rivers, streams and valleys. 
just as Tom's horse was leaping over the great river Shannon. Tom could restrain himself no longer and he shouted, Well done, old plough horse! And the horse froze. Everything froze. And Tom dismounted and he walked back home. And as he was walking home, as he was passing that same bush, he saw down and he thought to himself, oh no, is he going to be angry with me? Is he going to be furious with me? Have I made an enemy of the Lord of Death? Oh, what will I do? But when Down saw him, he only laughed. Ah, well, Tom, that was a disaster, wasn't it? Ah, uh, never mind, never mind, it's grand. Don't worry about it. A mistake could happen to anyone. Here, look. Take this bag of gold. Meet me here again tomorrow evening. We'll try again. It'll be fun. So Tom, relieved, somewhat confused, takes the second bag of gold back home, gives it to his wife, who's even more delighted. And he takes some rest and has some dinner and waits for the next evening. When he meets with Down again, and this time he is not given some old plough horse, but another great war charger, like the rest of Down's company. And this time on their journey, Tom is able to keep his mouth shut. And the raid is successful. They were able to kidnap the young woman. But, to Tom's eyes, this didn't seem like a kidnapping. The young woman seemed perfectly happy to be leaving with Down. If anything, she seemed a little put out that they hadn't been successful the night before. But Down and his riders and Tom, they went to the great hill of Nakfirna, where Down has one of his homes. They went through a great hole in the top of the hill into the halls of Down where Down and the young woman were married. And it was a great celebration. It lasted all week with wonderful music and food and drinking and dancing. And Tom himself, he took his pipes and the gift of music Down had given them at their first meeting. And he began to play all the songs he knew with greater vigor and joy and skill than he had ever played them before. He played songs he had only heard in passing and never played before with incredible skill and dexterity. And he played music he had never heard before in his life with incredible vigour. And as the celebrations ended, Tom said to Down, Look, this has been wonderful, this has been lovely. But I think I need to be getting home to my family. They must be wondering where I am. And Down says, Tom, you've been with us for a year. Your family thinks you're dead. Not long after you came off with us, a body looking exactly like you washed up on the riverbank. Sure, your wife has remarried and everything. But here, look, I'll tell you what. Take this bag of gold and you head on home and I'm sure everything will be fine. So Tom takes this third bag of gold and a sense of trepidation and he heads home. And when he gets near his home, he meets one of his neighbours. And the neighbour, upon setting eyes on Tom, turns pale, thinking they've seen a ghost, a dead man walking, and they flee in terror. And Tom just kind of laughs to himself. He thinks this is quite funny. He heads inside and he finds his wife's new husband and his wife and they have a bit of a conversation and it wasn't at really any trouble. Sure, they weren't really married if Tom wasn't dead the whole time. The old marriage hadn't ended. The priest sorted out everything. The new husband went off on his way and Tom and his family, in a very unusual instance for an Irish story, lived happily ever after. Well that is our first story about Down, 
who is one of the strangest lords of the dead in any mythology, anywhere. Down stories are always a little bit weird. We'll be going into that more in the down analysis video that should be coming soon. Thank you for watching this video, for leaving likes, shares, subscribes, comments, all those things, many of which are not things that you actually leave, but shut up, that's why. And a special thank you to the mighty Ashkarp, first of her name, keeper of the magic harps and empress of the great shiny sea, Queequeg, who is a new patron, which it's nice to see I have literary figures supporting my channel. And to all of the other patrons whose names you see scrolling across the screen, and all of my other patrons as well. If you want to support the channel, you can of course do so by going to my Patreon. Uh, for as little as a dollar a month, you will get to vote on what videos I make and what topics I do. If you don't have money to be spending, likes, comments, shares, and subscribes. They all work very well. If you'd like to make one-time donations, there's Kofi. If you'd like to buy yourself some merch, I'm on Society6. There's, all, there's lots of ways, lots of ways you could do it. Just, just remember that your applause is the only way to counteract my daily chant of I don't believe in fairies.